take a closer look at advanced 2D vector analysis. Let's start with a problem involving a boat navigating across a fast-flowing river. A boat pilot leaves shore on one side of a wide river and powers the boat at a constant velocity of 2.0 meters per second, perpendicular to the shoreline. The river flows at a steady speed of 3 meters per second, except for the area just downstream of a sandbar, where the river's speed is zero. If the pilot crosses 35 meters of open river, then reaches the 42 meter wide sandbar, then crosses 22 meters of free flowing river, how far downstream from the point of departure does the boat reach the other river bank? Also, what angle is formed by the boat's overall direction during the crossing? This journey has three legs, and we can solve for one at a time. First, let's place the coordinate axis onto the scenario with the boat's departure point at the origin. For this first leg, the boat travels 35 meters in the positive x direction. To figure out how far downstream the river takes it in that time, we can use our constant velocity equation, v equals d sub x divided by t. We solve for the time by rearranging our equation to see that time is equal to distance divided by velocity. The boat's horizontal distance, traveled, is 35 meters, and its horizontal velocity is 2.0 meters per second. So the time the first leg of the river crossing takes is 17.5 seconds, or using significant figures, 18 seconds. In 18 seconds, the river moves the boat downstream in the vertical direction. The river current moves the boat a distance downstream that equals the velocity of the current times the total time, 18 seconds. 3 meters per second times 18 seconds equals 54 meters. Now the boat crosses behind the sandbar, so there is no downriver current pushing on it. Let's assume the boat quickly loses all its vertical momentum, so that for this leg, the boat travels straight ahead across the river. After the second leg of the journey, the boat has moved 35 plus 42 meters, or 77 meters, across the river, and is 54 meters downstream from its starting point. During the last leg, the boat is once again pushed downstream by the river current, at a rate of 3 meters per second. The boat travels 22 meters horizontally. To find the time this takes, we divide the distance to travel, 22 meters, by the velocity of the boat, 2 meters per second. We find that this third leg of the journey takes 11 seconds. In 11 seconds, the current pushes the boat downstream a certain distance, the time the boat travels in the horizontal direction is the same amount of time it travels in the vertical direction. That distance equals the velocity of the current in the river times the time. This is 3 meters per second times 11 seconds, which equals 33 meters. Adding 33 meters to the boat's vertical displacement and 22 meters to its horizontal displacement, we find that the position of the boat when it reaches the other side of the river is 99 meters in the positive x direction and 87 meters in the positive y direction. We can answer the first question for this exercise. The boat moves 87 meters downstream during the crossing. To figure out the overall angle the boat moved in, shown here by the dashed line, we can use the fact that the boat started its journey at the origin and ended at the coordinate x equals 99 meters and y equals 87 meters. When solving for the angle, we use the tangent of theta, the angle made by the dashed line, equals the boat's ending y value divided by its ending x value, the opposite side of the triangle created by the dashed line, divided by the adjacent side. Taking the inverse tangent of both sides of this equation, we find that theta equals the inverse tangent of y over x. Plugging in 87 meters for y and 99 meters for x, we find that theta equals 41 degrees with respect to the positive x axis. Let's look at another example. A crossbeam in the frame of a house experiences forces in four directions. The beam, shown from its end, is designed to withstand a maximum net force of 30 newtons. What is the net force on the beam from the forces shown, and will the beam be able to handle the force? To solve this question, we will want to break the four applied forces into their x and y components, add them up, and then use the Pythagorean theorem to find the net force magnitude, and our tan function to find the net force direction. We can use this table to keep track of our work. We can look at the angle of each of the four forces to figure out the x and y components of each 
The easiest way to find the components of each force is to find their angles with respect to the positive x-axis. The first force, F sub 1, is directed at an angle of 38 degrees from the positive x-axis. F sub 2 is at 141 degrees. F sub 3 is at 360 minus 105 degrees, or 255 degrees. And F sub 4 is pointed at 360 minus 49 degrees, or 311 degrees. For each force, the x component of that force is found by taking the cosine of the force angle and multiplying it by the force magnitude. And the y component is found by taking the sine of the force angle and multiplying it by the force magnitude. Filling in the equations for these components, our table now looks like this. We only need to calculate the components, add them up, and then find the overall magnitude to solve this question. When we multiply each force magnitude by its respective trigonometric angle, we can update our table to show the components of each force, as well as the overall net x and y force components. Now we solve for the overall magnitude of the net force acting on the beam. That magnitude equals the square root of the sum of the x components squared plus the sum of the y components squared. Plugging in the 29.2 newtons for the sum of the x components and 15.9 newtons for the sum of the y components, we find that the overall force magnitude on the beam is 33.2 newtons. This exceeds the 30 newton load that the beam was designed for, and adjustment will need to be made. To find the angle at which the net force is being exerted, we take the tan inverse of all the forces acting in the y direction, divided by the sum of the forces acting in the x direction. The angle theta equals the tan inverse of 15.9 newtons divided by 29.2 newtons. Theta equals 28.6 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. Let's try one more example. While napping in your backyard hammock, your dog Fido picks up your sunglasses and runs off, traveling in five different directions as shown before dropping the sunglasses and wandering off. Take a minute, press pause, and see what answer you come up with. Did you find that the shortest distance is 16 meters, at an angle of 58 degrees? If not, let's take a look at it together. Overall, what we want to do is find the x and y components of each segment of Fido's journey. Then, add them together to find the overall distance and direction you would walk to get to the sunglasses. Because we have five different journey segments to keep track of, let's use a table to organize our information. We want to fill in the x and y components. Since all of our angles are with respect to the positive x-axis, the x components of each leg are equal to the overall length times the cosine of the angle. The y components are the length times the sine of the angle. Now that our table is all filled in, we can calculate all these components. And then, we add the x columns together and the y column together. The sum of the x components of Fido's movement is 9.7 meters, and the sum of the y components is 15.3 meters. We can use these numbers to solve for the overall magnitude of the direction of the dog's motion. r, the magnitude of the resulting vector, equals the square root of the sum of the x components squared, plus the sum of the y components squared. Plugging in our components, we find that r equals 18.1 meters, or, using significant figures, is 18 meters. To find the angle, the tangent of the overall angle of this vector, theta, equals the y component divided by the x component. If we take the inverse tangent of both sides, then theta equals the inverse tangent of y over x. Plugging in our values, we find that theta is 58 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. That's a closer look at advanced 2D vector analysis. For more physics in motion, go to our homepage where the entire series is available to you.